Reap. Can you hear it? Welcome to Relay. Hello! Uh-oh. This might be a problem. Is that okay? Why? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, uh, just to, to let everyone know, OBS currently isn't finding my desktop audio, which, you know, is these lovely folks that you see here. Um, and I don't know why it's not finding my desktop audio. Yeah, yours fine, and they can hear my mic. Um, theoretically, they can hear my mic, but, uh, they can't hear you guys. Um, yeah, so basically, I'm going to, uh, uh, why didn't it show me this before? I don't know why it didn't show me this before. Can you actually sign? Okay. Uh, I've, I've put out the request for help, uh, so hopefully help will, will arrive shortly. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to look at these settings and try and figure out why, all of a sudden, without changing anything ever, it no longer works. It just doesn't think that I've got desktop audio. Um, so, uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, Shiver? <laughs> Can they? How? Really? Okay, people in chat, can you hear Ms. Hearts? Cause... Cause the mixer here... No, they can't. The mixer here, uh, has no... No audio. Uh, so we're just going to take a quick break while you watch us because, yeah. And uh, success is here to hopefully save the day. So, Hi, uh, yes. Desktop audio doesn't pick up. Okay. Well, remember you have it set to a different device for. Yeah, Skype I've got it set to both. Right? Uh, to both. I've got both of them listed there. Uh, audio default def well Windows output well no there you go can one of you speak no no it looks like it's too loud. don't <laughs> like spam whoa let's turn that down okay okay you're welcome thank you have a great day everyone bye <laughs> That's okay Canadian for go fuck yourselves and don't call me again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will say it is nice that I do have uh, in-house tech support who appears when I call. Um, so, uh, now that we have audio, I will start this with the intro. In intro. In intro? Or is that the intro enough? I don't even know. Um, <laughs> you know what? I was going to sing this week for the intro, but I think I've put you all through enough uh, pain and torture that I won't. So... I'm Eris, below me is Shiver, beside me is Ms. Hearts, and to the bottom side over there is Triangularity. Welcome, everyone. Aloha. Good ending. So, Shiver, I'm going to uh, take a moment to ask you to ask our beautiful guests who they are and where they come from while I go uh, change the shirt because it is really bad and I should... <laughs> Probably. I can't that. look at you without feeling a little bit epileptic. Yeah, so I'll go fix that. You run this cast. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is actually all entirely planned. There was so little to talk about this week that I figured that we have to find a way to kill a few minutes before we even start. So, sure. I'm sure this is very entertaining. Yes, I hope so. All right, then. So, going in order of sexiness, triangularity. Who are you? What do you want to do in the verse? Hi, uh, I'm just a basic fan. Uh, recently, uh, 
uh, watching a bit of um, shows in there and I started to help out at the base uh, being a curator for rock and uh, metal. So I help out in the back scene of... Uh, and is that a Belgian accent I hear? <laughs> no, I'm from Norway, so uh, even though uh, some people uh, think I sound Belgium, I'm from Norway. <laughs> and uh, what is it you hope to do, like, in the verse when it releases? Yeah, uh, <laughs> when uh, the game uh, finally will be releasing, I probably will uh, go around and explore uh, and enjoy finding new stuff in the verse. Excellent. That's... Yeah, please. Ms. Hearts, Hello. your great self. <laughs> and those of you, those watching who don't know you somehow, who are you? What do you do? I am a streamer and, of course, Star Citizen backer. And dogfighter, I guess. You might have seen me in the game. Do you win or does the dog? It's a team effort. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I didn't want to lead the conversation too much there. And what do you <laughs> hope to do? when Star Citizen is released? So when I first pledged, I thought I would be doing something like exploration. Uh, I usually am pretty independent and not necessarily into fighting. And then I started getting into an arena commander and had friends that played with me and had fun and actually got kind of good at it. So now I would like to do something that will include a little fighting. Uh, so maybe exploring dangerous places. Um, also thought about combat medic, that sort of thing. So something where I can be in a little fighting ship. Cool. So uh, to both of you, triangularity first. Um, when did you back, and what made you back? Uh, so going back, I am an old Star Wars Galaxies player. Uh, after that game was, um, well, put off. Destroyed? I, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've been looking around for a sci-fi game that for, well, my requirement where me uh, met. And I didn't find Star Citizen until 2014. Uh, but I didn't back until uh, 2015. Uh, a bit late, but uh, for, well, for some people. But... Still, I'm here, uh, and I can't wait. And you, Ms. Hertz? So, my best friend is Bear of Red. And Never heard of him. <laughs> and if you haven't heard of him, well, just keep paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, would not shut up about Star Citizen. I'd heard about it before, and like, eh, why would I pledge to a game that's not done yet? Nah, eh, just not interested. But he would not stop talking about it. And then he wrote some fan fiction, which I believe I'm the only person to have read. <laughs> and that nice. got me interested in the lore, and I started reading the lore and all the backstory on it. And uh, that ended up making me pledge in December of 2015, I believe. 2015? Nice. 2015. Writing some Star Citizen fan 2014. fiction got me here. Something like that. Yeah. So, see, write Star Citizen fan fiction. That's yeah. good. Write uh, anything in a mental just house. Write. Although I backed, I couldn't play. Oh. Uh, my, my computer would not handle it. So I didn't actually get to play until that April after I got my tax return <laughs> and a new computer. And then that computer still only kind of handled it uh, until I finally got a decent computer where I could stream and play at the same time. Nice. Well, uh, the same goes to you as to everyone else in the community, but uh, glad to have you both back in Star Citizen and everyone else. Um, yeah, for everyone who's, who's saying that my uh, camera is crap, uh, unfortunately, we have to run through Skype until Discord video actually shows up to more than 10% of people, of which I am not one. And, um... I've got it. What? I've got it. How is it? I don't know, I haven't tried it. Oh! <laughs> but, uh, 
because Skype only puts me in a really tiny window at the bottom, and because OBS won't allow you to and Skype argue with each other, and like I can't have OBS take my camera or else Skype won't show my it's just Skype sucks, okay? Skype sucks. Microsoft should burn for what they did to Skype. Okay. Microsoft should just burn. In, <laughs> nope. in a non literal yeah, way, only problems. economically. Uh, and Google Hangouts is even worse because it only shows the person that's talking and it's just messed up. Um, so I actually did write out a, a fair number of topics for this week because uh, there was so little to talk about this week. Um, but let's start with talking about uh, the burn down. Did, did Triangularity Ms. Hearts, did either of you watch ATV this week or at least look into the, excuse me, the status of the bug count? Yes. So, it sounds like as of Friday, uh, CIG are down to 77 must-fix bugs. Uh, on Tuesday, when they recorded the burn down, there were 88. So they've gone down about 10 in four days, 10 bugs down. Um, and none up. Yes. I, yeah, and none up, which yes. is what which is important. To the nun? <laughs> uh they're not physically capable of doing that. Um <laughs> We're just gonna Hi. leave that there, because I could carry on. So these nuns, how many bugs did they fix, Eris? Eleven? <laughs> We're on a mission from God. Oh, we've only just begun. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, we, first off, what do you guys think about the, the change from, from telling us, you know, oh, here's a release date, here's a release date, here's a release date, to, these are the, like, this is the number of bugs we've got to fix. I personally like it, but I see why they wouldn't have done that before, because critics are going to get mad when the bugs go up. But that's a thing that happens. What do you think, Triangularity? Uh, I like it too. Uh, I did, um, when I first started with the days, uh, I didn't think that was a good idea. But, um, and they removed it. But I, I like it how it is now. Uh, I like to see how the things are developing without uh, seeing the numbers because development, well, Programming are difficult. It yeah. will be delayed. Yep. It, and I don't know. I, I agree. I like it. Shiver. I think we're all pretty it, much. It's, new yeah. It's double edged sword, really, isn't it? Because if they don't give any dates and it's just, you know, he here is the progress on the bugs, then it can lead to spec people making their own speculation, which can be completely outlandish or if they just show the dates and they miss them, that leads to people speculating, and that speculation can be completely outlandish. Yeah. Also, Shiver, I hate to say it, but uh, your camera did the freezing thing again. Clean and stole my ass. <laughs> uh, they make products for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... So let's let's talk a little bit. So they they showed us the burn down. You know they're they're going through the bugs. I personally think that you know every week they're going to go through you know ten or so. They'll they'll probably get rid of thirty bugs, add another twenty. Get rid of forty yeah. bugs, add another thirty for probably another two weeks. And then I think we'll see a week or two of like they get rid of thirty bugs and only add ten. And then we're going to get to a week where there's like, there's 10 bugs left and those 10 bugs might take them a week or two to finish. But that's, that's my, uh, guesstimation. Um, I think it's good that we're, we're finally seeing it though, but we didn't really see much else in the burn down this week. Um, so let's talk about outposts because that was all their health. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Everyone, I am so sorry. We talked about Gamescom basically 
for two hours, we talked about Gamescom earlier this week when we did a, a relay table, which is up on YouTube now. It'll be up on the relay shortly. But we talked about Gamescom for forever and what we expect at Gamescom. And after that, there's nothing else to talk about until Gamescom, right? <laughs> so, actually, you know what? Because neither of you were on that show, what, what are you expecting and hoping for from Gamescom? Actually, I don't think I'm going to be able to watch it live. So I'm going to have to watch recording. Yeah, I know. Damn work. Um, I'm calling you sick. <laughs> I've actually got my expectations pretty low yeah. on it. Um, I'm not expecting much more than what we're getting from ATV, basically. Uh, just hopefully features that are coming up in 3.0. Um, but... They can't have much up their sleeve right now. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think too. Triangularity? Well, um, I'm going there. So I'm quite hyped. Um, That's awesome. Uh, so I will be watching it live uh, in the audience. So I'm looking really forward to it. I hope that there will be a cool ship they're going to show off. Um, what they are going to show, I don't know. So, it can be everything. Um, my expectations are then therefore quite low because we, <laughs> they haven't shown us where, where they are really. Uh, so, I do hope that they will manage to blow our minds, but we will see. Shiver? Yeah, it, it, I, I'm always expecting the worst and prepared for the worst. And then when they're like, so here's something that's really quite interesting and cool, you'll be like, that that actually was. But yeah, expectations are low. Uh, now, Show me some fish. I'll yeah. be happy. Now, <laughs> uh, Triangular, Sandworms. Triangular made a, a nice point there of like, we haven't seen where they are. But I also think that's a good thing. We have we don't really know where they are, and we haven't known where they are since Gamescom last year. Like it's been basically a year now since we've known where Star Citizen is, right? So while my, while my expectations are actually very low because of last year, they're also very high because we don't know where anything is. And I, I like Recon Up's idea. Recon Up, uh... <laughs> unless, unless the update is bloody well mobile first, I don't give a shit about Spectrum. <laughs> okay? <laughs> well, it is, in a way, it is kind of important, because it isn't just, you know, <laughs> I'm in the game, oh, I'm in the fucking library! It's more than that. It is, like, a back-end structure for communication in the game for other th for basically surfing the spectrum in game like the in game internet it, it it is a little bit more than that i have to, in fairness and that that's interesting it's not a technological marvel it's nothing new it but it's it's interesting it's it's more than just sitting there and cybering with someone yeah well when when you can be in spectrum and chatting with someone in game while you're at work or you've got the voiceover in game, then I'll be more interested in Spectrum. Yeah. I I I think okay, well, you know what? Who here uses Spectrum? <laughs> <laughs> oh, tri okay. <laughs> Triangularity, tell us what you think about Spectrum then. Well, uh Spectrum. Uh it's a nice platform. Uh, looking uh, forward to what they can do it with it. Uh, what they can do with it in game. Um, it's definitely uh, something that can be developed quite far. Uh, do look, look forward to seeing a render and texture. Yeah, uh, hopefully a video been done through Spectrum. Um, so I think it's a nice. 
way to go, co communicate because we need something like that. Uh, we definitely need it for uh, organizations and well, events we have we arranged in the game. So I think it will be good. Um, they definitely try <laughs> to make it good. So um, we will see. Uh, we will see how it will be, uh, turn up. But I do have good hopes for the Spectrum uh, in game. I have really good hope for Spectrum in-game. The things that they can theoretically do with Spectrum in-game, I really like the idea of... And, and I mean, most other... You know, I mean, Discord kind of does it, right? Like, you can turn on Discord in-game in overlay for lots of games, and you can talk to people in-game with Discord, kind of. But the idea of Spectrum being for Star Citizen and built for Star Citizen and being able to talk to someone in Star Citizen while you're at work. Like, your friend works different hours. Your friend's in the UK, and he gets off work four hours, five hours before you do, and you sit there and talk to him and find out what he's doing and where you have to meet him when you go home. And I just... I'm just picturing one day, you know... So, what did you do for anything? Oh, plane, plane. You know, I drive a plane. plane pilot a plane. I was too busy talking on Spectrum and crashed. <laughs> Wait, the game crashed or the plane? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Uh, I shouldn't say that. I'm going to get on a fucking plane soon. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Have fun. Thanks. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm reading chat. If, if I go missing... Don't let them call off the search like they did with MH370. Don't let them stop. Okay, if I notice well, that you haven't we'll come back, if I notice that you haven't returned, I will definitely pretend to care. That's more than I hope for. <laughs> there we go. Um, oh, I don't even know where to go next. I, I I'm... I'm looking at my document of topics and just kind of dreading talking about outposts. Why? Uh, I, should we talk about topic. blowing doors off of ships instead? We could talk about that. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's talk about... So, okay. So, 3.0 has now been branched away from the dev branch, right? 3.0, they're working on bugs. The rest of the game is being built on its own now. Am I having a stroke or is this really happening? Okay, what? so it's not just me. No, it's okay, not me we're all just looking at each other like, is he? <laughs> are we? One of us is. What's happening? This is professional stream today. What? You're, 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 you're being assimilated by the Borg. Am I? <laughs> is my audio bad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey. that. Is that what you okay? It's like a McDonald's drive thru I have a feeling that people in <laughs> chat aren't like people no, watching the stream English. aren't seeing that. So I think it's just Skype. So, so everyone, Outpost, because fuck him, he, he's he's in his own little world. Outpost, do you think they will have any kind of uh, gameplay Shiver. associated with Shiver the release here. of 3.0? Here. Shiver, I'm giving you something. You can work with this. Those are, uh, there's a lot of topics there of what I want. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong one. Here. <laughs> oh, God. Best podcast ever. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There, Shiver, go, go look at that and start asking some questions about outposts because... God. Oh my god, there actually is a document for the show. Yes, there is. I created a document for the show. I had to have a plan. Sam? <laughs> well, you're pixelated even to us now, but your audio seems better. Okay. <laughs> hey, let's talk about Good thing there wasn't much to talk about this week, kids. But don't worry, we're going to have a Gamescom stream. Everything looks fine on my end. The little color box at the bottom of OBS is green, okay? 
people say you're coming through fine on OBS. Yeah, so I think it's probably just Skype. Um, let's talk about outposts. We'll pretend to understand you. Yes! <laughs> Smile and nod. Shiver, you asked the question about outposts then. Um, oh yeah. So, what do you think or hope they'll include on outpost gameplay mechanics on release of 3.0? Or do you think they will just be these showpieces that we can walk in and, you know, the best that we can hope to achieve is to jump out on someone and say supplies? Supplies? <laughs> supplies. <laughs> Two weeks on the job and supplies. <laughs> Right now, I'm expecting Outposts to be a bigger, more advanced, more featured, I don't know, version of the uh, security Kovalex shipping mission. Where you've got a structure, tons of stuff in it, you can go sort through it. That was the spooky one there. The gravity's messed up, right? That was Kovalex? Kovalex gravity's messed up, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. There. So, I'm expecting Kovalex with gravity. And more stuff. Uh, well, as outposts in itself are... Uh, well, it, there's so much things you can do with them. Uh, if you uh, if you can uh, involve other aspects uh, like uh, search missions and well, uh, find documents uh, like Galax or um, do th uh, different uh, stuff around them. Uh, we have seen. Well, things that will happen later, there will be iterations later down the, down the stretch uh, for the 3.1 and so on and so forth. Um, and I do hope that we will see in 3.0 uh, a bit more complex quest related to Outpost. So we, we have to find uh, user use our imaginations to uh, find the different kind of um, home quest lines during this uh, and uh, in their ATV this uh, they, they they shown us kind of that we have to look for clues even not necessarily uh, there's a big quest uh, uh, arrow pointing towards one. We have to find uh, the correct outpost with the correct manufacturer, uh, the, the correct age, uh, and so on and so forth. So we'll probably be able to see uh, them use outposts and design for them uh, in respect to the quests. And we, I hope, that will we be able to feel the atmosphere that uh, they will be able to make with them? Yeah, that's a good question. Is the atmosphere is the atmosphere are the atmospheres going to be different on the outposts? Because they said they're going to look different depending on the company that made them. They're going to have different stuff in them. But is the atmosphere going to be different based on the planet it's on? I mean, it's all on moon. It's all moon gameplay, isn't it? For three point oh, mm. so one would imagine that the workaround for that if that system is not in which i don't think it would be would be just to assume there's no atmosphere on the moon or very little atmosphere and there's very little to no atmosphere in the outpost for now but i would with the physics grid system and things like that they can easily implement eventually a system where they say here is an outpost this is the atmosphere this is the out of the you know this is the moon it's on and then they should be able to just in theory, if there's no atmosphere, blow you out the flipping airlock like you could on a ship. As as Mr. Sherman in chat says, e e no matter what they, like, whatever new systems or features we get in 3.0, they're still just the very tip of the iceberg because that's yeah. what they're able to get out in 3.0. But all of 3.0 is a building block. It's, it's a change to how the game works. It's a a huge code change to the engine and basically everything that 
allows them to build more going forward in a more organized like item system 2.0 is huge for organizing everything planetary or, uh, procedural planets is huge for just a huge change to the way that they do everything it's all it's all stuff that they can build on which is all really important uh one of my questions the bulk of the work now so you don't have to suffer from a long-term issue that you may have to really gut the engine for at a later date and regret well and there are so many things we've been waiting on item 2.0 before yep. they can implement in the game mm -hmm. now one of my questions is if i'm sitting here and thinking just outposts on a procedural planet the only thing i can think of from memory right now that has something like that is no man's sky now, in No Man's Sky, the outposts are basically all identical. They've got one alien in there who jabbers a bunch of gibberish to you, and there's one little puzzle that you solve to go find a something, and that's it. And they all look the same. They all are the same. Is Do you, do you think we're going to get something like that in 3.0, or are we going to get something more advanced than... For example, No Man's Sky. This I'm hurts. expecting more advanced. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not expecting a whole lot, but definitely some variation. Um, and I'm guessing that the outpost might be a kind of display for, hey, look at this thing we put in, and then the next outpost will look at this other thing we put in, and the next outpost look at this other thing we put in, so that the different outposts are kind of highlighting a different feature. That's just a guess, but that, that wouldn't surprise me if they were all different to show off different things. What do you think, Triangularity? No, definitely. Uh, uh, I would uh, like to see how they use uh, the, um, the outpost like that, because uh, that's some of, some of the way that you can explore in the, the universe is to get in there and just enjoy one outpost. Yeah, I can uh, watch the small details and oh, enjoy how their attention to detail actually is because it's yeah. huge. Yeah, even if there's no gameplay at the outpost, if it's just something you go in and rummage around, I'll still be thrilled because, yeah. God, this is a pretty game. <laughs> um, the other, another question is, let's look at the, essentially the development path as far as we know it because I'm sure CIG have a different viewpoint of the development path of, of Outposts. But from what we know, like, a few months ago, last year, we didn't really know that Outposts were even a thing. Like, how do you guys feel about the development of Outposts from, from not existing to that first concept image that we got? I don't even remember when it was. Um, I will post... Oh, yeah, I will post the image in chat, actually, because I have it, uh, because I'm organized. But, like, from not knowing that outposts were a thing, to this first concept image we got of outposts sitting low to the ground, to them, you know, adding adding legs, stairs, modularity, what... How do you guys feel about this, hey, we've got outposts now? I'm going to start with Shiver, because I haven't started with Shiver yet. It's a, it's a good idea, because otherwise you've got this vast, completely empty game space. So having these in there, it, it not only creates a little bit of a distraction on the way, but it, it does have, even if, if, it, if it's all just completely decoration, and it's just to see if you can have an outpost on a planetoid or celestial object, then you know, jumping out on someone and saying, surprise, this is a bit of new gameplay. Some, and these, God, the people who play this game that often to think of new things to do will find new things to do. It, it's something new. It's something cool. What do you think, Triangularity? Uh, uh, well, the, uh, the development of the outposts are definitely going in the right direction. Um, there is nothing like being able to 
uh, hopefully be able to place outposts by yourself or the guild can do uh, do arrange guild cities uh, organization cities uh, and the amount of gameplay you can have by just allowing that is immense uh, just imagine all the bigger guild uh, guilds or organizations start bickering over one planet or one moon you will see immense uh, battle action and uh, um, uh, even uh, more social aspects like uh, diplomacy and trading between organizations you will uh, see high politics and that's one really cool thing about outposts and it's something you can lose when there's something an organization can lose by well, violent actions by another organization um you will see quite a lot of gameplay develop from that alone and no well, that's one well, aspect let's actually talk a little bit about something similar to that of I mean, right now, outposts are going to be placed by hand by CIG. Or or maybe they'll have an algorithm to procedurally place outposts. But I don't think that they're doing that. I think they're placing them all by hand. They've got designers going in saying where they should go. Um, how, important, yeah. how important are player-built ones? I mean, eventually, I'm sure they'll be important, but I don't think that's going to be in 3.0. No, no. no. But uh, eventually, is that like is that that's something that's going to change how the game works? Is that going to make it more re reminiscent to? I mean, Triangularity used to play Galaxies, and yeah. when I played Galaxies, one of my favorite things was just walking off into the distant on a, a distance on a planet and setting up some some wind generators and building myself a home right yeah yeah definitely and th there's nothing like building your own homestead uh and the kind of gameplay you can get out of it it's uh by being an old galaxies player uh, it's it's huge uh most of the gameplay in star wars galaxies didn't happen in the official cities most of it most of it um it happened in player-built cities, and when uh, guilds uh, or organizations are getting, uh, if we will see then that uh, we have play-built cities, we will definitely see both high politics and other kind of uh, game development outside just go around and shoot people happen it it will happen what do you think this hurts well and that's a good point that when you have the large organizations that are going to come just take over a planet and and mm -hmm. build that planet as they see fit assuming all is well within the organization that will create its own culture really literally on that planet and then there will be whether or not there's infighting, whether or not the city burns to the ground <laughs> or is attacked by another organization, could wipe out the planet, could wipe out your outposts and cities and such. So that could be a ton of non-storyline gameplay that gives you just this huge stand sandbox to play with. Shiver? Uh, oh. Okay, uh, Shiver. We lost Shiver. We lost Shiver. Uh, sorry, everyone. <laughs> I hope he comes back because it messes up everything. Um, Shiver? Well, please come back. <laughs> uh, how do I, one, give me one second. I gotta. Um, <laughs> I just, uh, I just, just want to highlight uh, Mr. Sherman in the chat yeah. that it's a double-edged sword by uh, being able to allow p p players to place settlements, but you can avoid that by uh, using. Um, uh, grid or some sort of a uh, game game. Uh, uh, you can disallow building everywhere. You can 
you can use um, when you build some some kind of a ruin somewhere, you can disallow building close to it. So you won't destroy any important places or ruins and such. So I would still say it's a it's a it's a way to make more gameplay in game. So even though it's one negative aspect of it, I do hope we can see it in game. Welcome back, Shiver. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's all going according to plan. Yeah? Okay, that's a good plan. Um, so, Space, uh, Space Mad Explorer did ask something. Uh, whether I believe Triangularity's hopes and dreams will come true in 3.0? No, I think that's a future patch. A uh, future patch. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we... We're not talking 3.0. We don't know exactly what the role of Outposts will be in 3.0. Things like what kind of gameplay will they add? Will there be NPCs in them? Have Do the NPCs in them have some assumption? Uh, what happens if I walk into an Outpost and kill everyone in it because I'm a jackass, and then two hours later, Shiver walks into it? Are there still people in it? Is there anything there? I've looted it. Is there something there for Shiver? Like, we don't, we don't really know... We don't really know how a lot of it's going to work. Um, but that said, I still think what they're doing with Outposts is pretty damn exciting. I mean, even even if you look at what was talked about this week in ATV, when it comes to, to branding, variation of branding, the, the ancillary structures, the weathering that they're at, I, I'm excited to go and explore and see that, oh, not every single outpost looks exactly the same. This outpost on one moon may be the same as one on another moon, but this one looks like it was just placed because there's there's very little weather effects on this moon. And then this other one looks like it's, you know, 150 years old because it's piled up with sand and it, it looks like crap and there's, like... I'm excited to see them, and I'm I'm glad that they're adding them because there does need to be stuff to do in 3.0. Uh, the biggest problem with a procedurally generated anything is running out of things to do in the procedurally generated thing, right? So, outposts, um, derelict ships, hugely important. Adds a ton of depth to gameplay. Yeah. So I'm going to put in chat again for like the third or fourth time the question document. So if you have questions for uh, the idiot here or the um, Shiver, you're muted. Uh, so okay, I can <laughs> no, now officially I can now officially call him the idiot down there. Um, <laughs> Or I'm just trying to be polite. Or, or either of our lovely, talented, uh, beautiful, and fantastic guests who know more than us and are better people than us, uh, ask in that question document, and uh, we'll get to those shortly. Uh, by the way, I do apologize again that this stream is a little bit of a cluster um, something. <laughs> Wait, are we not allowed to say fuck during the stream? You can say fuck as much fuck as you want. So. <laughs> um, Look, I'm, I'm quite happy with it, because if it wasn't such a clusterfuck, it would have just been me that fucked up this week. <laughs> <laughs> so, before we move on to, to the questions that hopefully people will, will ask us, uh, what do you hope? Like, what is your best case scenario for the gameplay that outposts will offer in 3.0 so 3.0 hits what can you do with and at an outpost what do you hope uh let's start with triangularity i hope that we will be able to discover a hidden quest in uh, uh outposts so we can discover something i like that i mean we we know that there's two main quest givers that they're working on getting in but the idea of smaller, more localized other quests. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Ms. Hartz? 
Well, Shiva brought up a great point and something I've said a lot before is our community is great at making our own games. So I'm hoping to see, you know, we're going to run through those quests, I'm assuming, pretty quick. Or if we don't, you'll see someone who does. But as we do, we'll be making up our own games and our own ways to use these outposts. So I'm hoping they will be feature rich enough to give us a ton of options in that regard. Sure. Very similar thought to what Ms. Hart said. You know, I'm thinking best case scenario. Um, there's an outpost. It has a number of objects on it. One person has a mission to go and collect said object. One person has a mission to also go and collect the exact same object from the exact same outpost. That's what I kind of hope for. Things like that, because that will lead to, well, there's only one thing. Only one person can have it. you got to shoot the other guy to have it. I like that. It's true. Okay, so I'm going to take a moment to uh, to mention that there is a contest, a relay contest going on over on Twitter before I forget because I forget things all the time. Uh, so if you want to win, I think we've got a $100 gift card and a Nox and maybe some other stuff. I don't know. Uh, go check that out. There's a relay page for it. There's a Twitter thing for it. Uh, go check it out. Um Okay, so where are we? We've talked about outposts. Uh, when? Okay, so it's not going to happen in 3.0. It might not happen in 3. Point anything, 3.1234, whatever. Um, which, as a side note, we really need a new roadmap for uh, what's coming in 3.1, 3.2, etc. Because we have no idea anymore at all. Uh, yeah, the to game's Bastard. totally changed. Yeah. We, we don't know what's going on next. Um, but when it does happen, because we know that they're working on um, uh, bloody uh, player build outposts, what do you want to be able to build? Do you want to be able to, to basically do the same thing that CIG does and place it anywhere? Do you think it should be... Uh, a bit more structured, like you can build only in certain areas. How do you think they should essentially balance player built outposts? No. Uh, <laughs> Damn it, well, Shiver. No, seriously. Fuck it, just anywhere. I, I want to be able to put my fucking secret space weed lab underground, man. Like, And there's no technological well, reason why I shouldn't. While I agree with that, I think it depends on the win and how many systems we have. If we have enough systems and big enough space that you can pretty much find a planet and hide and do whatever you want, then yeah, free for all. Put it anywhere. I got to agree with the results. But if space is limited, then there's going to have to be some sort of Space is big. Space is really, really, really big. big. You wouldn't believe how big space is. Um, don't panic. <laughs> you think a trip down to the chemist is far? Hey, I've got another question. <laughs> we all have a space towel. Mo <laughs> many of us have a space towel. Oh yeah, we need towels in game. How are we going to be able to use our damn towels? You can't towels. save the universe without a towel, Eris. That, that's like the first rule. Everyone knows this. Don't like wherever you go. Always remember to bring a towel. <laughs> uh, so Mr. Sherman in chat brings up a good point that we should actually question about player built structures. Uh, if there's no technical reason to restrict placement of player structures, then there's also no technical reason to not allow someone to blow the hell out of your structure when you're logged off and completely unaware. And I think that uh, actually, what was it, Conan Exiles had that problem where like you'd build this thing and then you'd log off and someone would come along and destroy the hell out of it. Like, so how do you think that, wh what will that mean for player structures? The risk of someone, the, the, risk, the risk of test being like, that is our target. And just 50,000 yeah, I mean, Auroras hitting your little tiny outpost. And it's Only now... Only on a sun. 
Well, they're going to get bored of the suns eventually, right? How many times can you crash into a sun? Then they're going to want to crash into moons. Then they're going to want to crash into ships. Then they're going to want to crash into individual people standing on space stations. I, 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 I have a cash. perfect point for this. Go. Longer will be involved. We won't get bored. It's true. <laughs> Well, uh, if you ask me, I would say that uh, if you place your settlement or outposts by yourself somewhere, you have to take the risk. If it gets destroyed, it will be destroyed. You probably have, um, you might have insurance that will be introduced in the game that could solve the money loss, but you will have the gameplay loss. So I would also say that. Uh, in the case of test bombarding someone with 50,000 uh, ships, um, it will be um, a huge organization battle. It will be large organization against large organization. And I will say that will be, uh, develop into uh, just more politics. Uh, I do hope though, that will be able to see some sort of a defense system introduced, like automatic gun turrets or anti-air anti uh, turrets and so on and so forth. So you will be able to use uh, buildings like a defense on your outpost. So you will I've even though- We've talking about that with uh... The, the recent, What's the new buggy thing? Yeah, the buggy yeah. has, I, and there's some Cyclone, con, yeah. there's some concerns about that buggy that a size one AA missile doesn't do much. But then we also don't really know much about what missiles do in Atmo versus out of Atmo because you have to think that an explosion when there's atmosphere might be big. I don't know, but yeah. Now, uh, I would say that it, it it will only lead to more kind of ga ga types of gameplay. Yeah. I, 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 uh, of course, there will be uh, p uh, people who will see this as a huge disaster that my little tiny outpost was destroyed by some pirates. But it can happen. It could happen in a kind of a, a setting like that. So, I, I, well, I don't and to go back to... <laughs> <laughs> to go back to what I was saying earlier, uh, if we have the multiple systems and space is big and all that, that'll be a bit of a defense in it being so far out and so far hidden. It's like finding a needle in a haystack to find an outpost. Yeah. From a gameplay perspective as well, you, it would be boring as an invading player if you could just walk in, trash the place, and walk out. I mean... Yeah. Obviously, What's I expect, uh, yeah, uh, like a small, cheap base that you've just set up and it's a toilet in a corner, which is more than the Cutlass has now. Then, yeah, that, that just walk in, steal the loo roll and go away. Whereas something that's got a lot more development, you know, I'd like to see hacking of the front doors or the option to blow up the front door, mm. some sort of uh, alert system tied in with Spectrum. So if I'm asleep at three o'clock in the morning and I'm ab like playing this game like a cracker, oh, I've cool. got my phone up next to me, it wakes me up and I'm like, coffee, kill, what? <laughs> I want that integration yeah. if I so wish to go that far into the game. Okay. I think we'll... Uh... <laughs> I don't know where to go after this, but to <laughs> questions. So let's uh, let's start taking some questions. Um, uh, my first question uh, to Mr. Sherman in the chat, if you're listening, uh, how much bigger is the freelancer getting and how many cutlasses will it be able to destroy uh, in a row? Uh, thank you. Um, None, because Cutlass doesn't have a toilet, so the pilots are no longer distracted with bodily functions and are permanently alert. Oh, okay. That's... You know what? It is actually scientifically proven that you make better decisions when you have to go to the toilet. 
That's only because the one decision you that. have to make is, should I go to the toilet or, <laughs> or should I not? Yes. Going to the toilet is the best decision. Yeah, but you're scientifically proven to make that decision more often <laughs> than choosing to wee your pants. I, no, I can... Do you really want me to counter this? Because I can counter this. Oh, no. <laughs> David Cameron did that method when he was negotiating with the European Union. Look where that ended us up. So I don't buy into that theory. <laughs> You're in Costas, man. Welcome to the clusterfuck. Um, so, uh, let's... Is it let's, the name of the show? We should just <laughs> rename the show to The Relay Clusterfuck. <laughs> <laughs> this really, really is a clusterfuck. He froze again. <laughs> He's just pissed off. He didn't think of that one. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, so, let's begin questions. Headclaw asks, uh, what control method do you use or plan to use for Star Citizen? Ms. Hart's going around. Uh, I use mouse and keyboard. No, wait, 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 wait. I have recently changed my mind. I'm switching to just NES controller. Impressive. <laughs> I, actually have, I actually have recently set up the NES controller to work with Star Citizen, and I got 92 points in Vandal Swarm. Beat that. Is, it, is that a genuine Nintendo controller, or just actually, a shell that's yeah. USB? No, um, so I have a USB Nintendo controller, and it's, it's flimsy, it's light. And so I got a converter to put on an actual NES controller and plug into my computer. So this is my actual controller from like 1989. Sat too close to a. Uh, looked on something here. Sat too close to the heater, and it's kind of warped. Oh, beautiful! Yeah. <laughs> it is my. Kind of what my. Is there one for my, the SNES? The, the uh, yeah. Super Famicom. Well, I mean, you can t you can get a c converter to convert any of these controllers into a USB port. Kind of want to have Super Wing Commander flashbacks now and yeah. play Squadron with a SNES controller. That'd be yeah. awesome. You can do it. I recommend it. You know, you, you'll, you'll suck, but <laughs> it's fun while waiting for 3.0. So when I'm not using the NES controller, uh, I use mouse and keyboard and a Rocat power grid. Uh, I use uh, Hotos. Uh, I like with the immersion. Hotas sure. and uh, I think I use rock gap power grids as well, but full Hotas and pedals because it just feels weird to me to control the six degree of freedom craft with the keyboard. I can't get my head around it. Uh, if I I'm want, <laughs> if I want to fly, I use a Hotas, even though I haven't found one I like yet. And if I want to shoot things, I use a mouse because you, you haven't found a Hotas you like yet. No. Have you tried looking at CH gear? Because I've given them a bit of a review over at Relay.se. <laughs> you have, Fucking and I did CH. actually, I, I did really actually read them. your review. In fact, I actually edited your review for grammar and quality and found it to be excellent. So thank you, Shiver, for your review of CH products. <laughs> um, but no, I have not investigated CH products because they cost money. And one of the things that I do not have after spending entirely too much money on ships slash relay is money. Uh, That's I'm, why I, I use mouse and keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got one free review, Hotas, and I'm hanging on to it, even though I reviewed it rather poorly. Uh, so, Captain PNS asks, how much do you know about... <laughs> Updates to why is that funny? What do you mean? Why is that funny? If I just called it's myself funnier Captain that you don't Phallus, know why would funny. you find that fine? What? <laughs> if I called myself Captain Phallus, would you find that sensible? <laughs> yes. Up in the sky, it's Captain Phallus. <laughs> oh, to all. oh, it means <laughs> penis. Oh, it's penis without <laughs> the vowels. I get it. You got really shafted on that one. Oh my god, you're a prick. <laughs> you should know better and protect yourself from that. Ah, 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 ah. 
I'll give I'm up. I'm just leaving that. You win. You win, yes! sir. I win. <laughs> <coughs> huh. I'm so sorry to Matt Sherman who decided to take his break to come and watch this shit. Yeah, I apologize so to everyone watching this. Sorry. <laughs> tag out. I'm tagging out. <laughs> I don't know. So what did Captain Penis say? Uh, Captain Penis asked, uh, how much do we know about updates to Arena Commander and Star Marine in 3.0? It'd be great to see some new modes in these game modes that include the planetary tech. I'm pretty sure there isn't any. I know nothing. I, I think this was all about the universe and content, so I don't think there's going to be any updates to Arena Commander and Star Marine. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I that's, wish there were, because the, I like shooting I, people. But. I will admit that, that that's actually an excellent, excellent question, Mr. Penis. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> Shiver has left again. <laughs> uh, very energetic oh, I I'm, I'm really sorry to both of you, because normally it's not quite this much of, a, much of a clusterfuck, but this week's a clusterfuck. I'm so, so I'm sorry to our guests, and I'm sorry to all our watchers and listeners, because, oh my god. Uh, what the hell? Um, uh, Heramus asks, uh, what do you think they're, that they're gonna pl- Oh, wait. Do you think that they're gonna play 2.6 at the booth at Gamescom? Yes. Yes. It's the only stable release to play. Yeah, I mean, if, if they can't get enough bugs internally, then- Already, I really doubt they're going to have it ready for day in Gamescom, so, no. Uh, I, I'd agree. Triangularity? Uh, I can't really... Uh, uh, I wouldn't... Uh, I can't uh, even guess. Kind of. Oh, Shiver says something? What's Shiver say? Shiver keeps apologizing. I think he might be Canadian. <laughs> There we go. Welcome back, Shiver. Uh, so, Haramis asks, Squadron 42 at Gamescom, Squadron 42 Episode 2 to CitizenCon, wouldn't that be a fine message to the backers? No. Um, uh, I think Squadron 42 was a failed... The showing Squadron 42 was a failed idea, and I'm, I'm not expecting to see any of it until they bring it out. I... I don't know what to think anymore because we were told that they weren't going to be doing a vertical slice and then that that was last year and then more recently we were told they might be doing a vertical slice so I don't know if we're going to see a vertical slice. I really, really, really hope though that at Citizen, like show us 3.0, show us a roadmap at, 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 at Gamescom at CitizenCon, please show the citizens something of Squadron 42, even if it's not a release date. Just show us something. Or show us the, the off-promise but still not existent to us uh, Squadron 42 schedule. Show us where it is. Show us something we need to know about Squadron 42. Uh, if, if For those of you that don't remember back to the Halcyon days of, um, what was it, 2012? God, that's a long, boy. Time ago. Was it 2012? Which, which, what? I don't the know. Kickstarter. You've only the given Kickstarter. us a quarter of a sentence. The Kickstarter. <laughs> when was the Kickstarter? 2013 it ended, didn't it? Yeah, sorry, 13. Sorry, sorry. I don't know why I'm thinking 12. So, if we all recall back to the Halcyon days of 2013, what was actually initially pro promised in the Kickstarter was only... Squadron 42. No, it was 20. People always get really pissed off whenever you say that. You know that, don't you? Why? But it's, as far as I know, it's true. It's it true. Works. The yeah. only thing that was actually and, and, promised in like, the Kickstarter in 2012 was Squadron 42. And the $6 million that Chris Roberts was seeking in 2012 was for Squadron 42 to create a great single player, possibly with co-op, space game and he would use those funds to create something more after but the goal was squadron 42 so yeah but it has grown into so much more it has yeah. it has and i'm 
I am so happy that it's grown into more, but we know more about the more that it has grown into than we do about the original promise. I, I, yeah. And actually, yeah. 20, October 2012. October yeah. 2012. Right. And they did actually open Kickstarter, or open backing to the gold ticket holders before the Kickstarter actually launched. And then the Kickstarter launched and then, whew, madness There happened. was a bit of a, a fuck up, wasn't there? Because people were so interested by, you know, a new Chris Roberts game that I believe just a random member of the public found the new website and was yes. registered citizen number one and it wasn't Chris. I, I do I do remember hearing that story a few times. Yeah. I love people. <laughs> uh, Mr. Sherman in chat probably knows this probably better than us, but uh, open backing actually started the day after the GDC online presentation, which, man, I don't even remember that. That's a long okay. time ago. Uh, okay, so Bok Birchi, I'm sorry if I murdered that, um, asks, do we think that all the Outpost modules are cubicles or will there be more variety? That's a good question. I mean, they Define say there's going to be variety. Yeah, they say there's going to be variety because different manufacturers are going to look different, but are they going to have the whole same shape? Are they all going to be rectangular? good question i hope not triangles <laughs> that's that's what the consolidated outland ones are gonna look like yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay i know that symbol especially the way shiver did it as something else but, uh, what would that be no. i'm unclear <laughs> someone please explain the inside joke to me did you remember that guy earlier who called himself Captain PNS? That was funny. <laughs> Shiver wasn't making a triangle. I was. Yes. Now, uh, to, to be honest, I do not see it's uh, logical uh, for outposts to have other shapes than squares. Because size matters. It's much more easier to tra transport the uh, squares than other shapes. I could see simple geometric shapes. Square, cylinder, I don't know why a cylinder, piping sort of thing. Rectangle for corridors. I could see that sort of simple thing. But I mean, as I long as it interlocks. Outposts that have kind of the dome and then the hall to the dome and the hall to the dome. Hmm. I, I want to see something that, oh, crap, my memory might be failing, but I don't think we've heard much about since, but back when CIG were originally talking about procedural planets, there was the mention that they couldn't really do cave systems in them procedurally. I'd like to see outposts that go down. And maybe everything underneath is, mm. is like, pre-built, and, but I'd like I to... I, I like that one. <laughs> it wasn't shiver this time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, good job. Just, yeah, underground outpost for growing rhubarb. Yeah, yeah, underground. Yeah, for rhubarb. Rhubarb. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, everyone. I'm going away soon, so it, the podcast quality will go up. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I don't know. If, oh, if it was this week, yes. <laughs> hey, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have either of our lovely guests. Also, I wouldn't know what to talk about. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so hydroponic. Is this a subtle way of saying find a fucking internet connection when you're in Japan shit? Yes, yes. It's, <laughs> uh, you can't leave me to this. I don't know what I will do without you. Please save me. Uh, if anyone out there wants to join the Relay team in the fast-moving and ever-changing <laughs> and extremely non-lucrative market of 
being my personal slave, I'm looking to hire for the one month while Shiver is away. You too can enjoy the gloriousness of putting together notes for me, finding people for podcasts <laughs> for me, and generally telling me that I am a good person. Because that's Shiver's job. Do I have to tell you you're a good person? I, yeah, it's in your contract. Shit. Yeah, you've, you've, <laughs> been, you've, been, you've, been, you've, you've been kind of slacking on that one, to be honest. Now I know. <laughs> you, your glasses look lovely. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Fastcart asks, or says, uh, there's no reason to emulate the audio problems that the last ATV had, which made them re-upload their last video. Can't you find <laughs> other ways to express your devotion than to emulate them? <laughs> no. I have absolutely no originality, and uh, if you ask uh, quite a number of people, I am in fact paid by CIG. We are hashtag shillin' it for life. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, hey, we just follow our marching orders, right? Uh, Risk1911 says, uh, to Ms. Hearts asks, what are your... What are your feelings about them still not having female characters after five years? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping it would be so awesome. I know this isn't going to happen. It would be awesome if we log into to 3.0 the first time. And it's like, oh my god, I get to play a girl. Um, not going to happen. <laughs> I, yeah, I... Uh... I wish the female model had gotten a little more priority from the start. Uh, as someone who basically only plays female characters in any game and is now going to have to somehow play a male character, um, I agree. I think that the female character should have been given priority a hell of a long time ago. Um, and, and sometimes, okay, you found the subject I'm salty about. Uh, and sometimes it feels like she's something that's being worked on in between projects. Worked on in between, yes. yeah. I see what's happening. I've dated a guy like that before, too. <laughs> what do you think, triangularity? Uh, we need it. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, I do hope we will see it in 3.0, but I don't believe so. Um, I don't. But um, e even though we kind of say that we need it, the developers need it, need it too. They need it for all the animations and, well, game develop. So it's not for me that I want it. I want them to have a finished female character to use for develop the, develop the game. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah. how are they doing Squadron Forty Two without a female model? I want to be able to play. I mean, it ne you need to be able to play one or the other. And if the female player isn't ready yet, though, I think there's a difference between the like you can customize your own female character and you're playing this female. I don't know. I don't know. But. Well, I would be okay with having a female character and customization later, because that's what we've got for the male character right now. Genderless mannequins. Completely genderless. That's I think I'm we should all play uh, gelatinous blobs. I'm okay with that. <laughs> oh, I mean, you, you got... Uh, yeah, it's fair enough to want to play a female avatar if that's what you want to do, but, like, it's like, well, we, we also want this, and we also want that, and, you know, I mean, I'm not exactly joking when I say we should have been just genderless mannequins, because then no one would have given a shit until it's time to You're right, Shiver, we should, we should abolish gender. gender, and we should all be gender neutral. There's no bathrooms, what's the point in having a gender <laughs> in the moment? Yeah, if they're taking out the toilets from the Cutlass, who cares? Uh, but th there is also the point of and, and I've looked at some of some other games, and I think CIG 
yes, the the um, the character female character model isn't out yet, and they do want to do it right, and they want it to not look shit, and they want it to have all the same features and all the same animations, all the same capabilities as the male character. And I know that it's fallen behind, and that's it's honestly to me disappointing that it's fallen behind, but I do kind of understand why. The player base is, I think, three percent female, which sucks. And maybe a female character would increase that player base because I know my girlfriend doesn't want to play. My my girlfriend doesn't want to play Star Citizen until there is one mining and two a female character model. And uh, I've heard that from so many women. Yep. Uh, now most of these are partners of players who actually play the game. Yeah. But I also think the finished game is going to be something that will attract all genders and everything in between. Yep. And that right now, it doesn't look that way. And I think, I, I wish, I mean, even if she's not in the game, there was a little more focused on female characters. Granted, that's, I'm judging from the past. We have seen a lot more female models. There's been uh, one of those outposts. Yep. It's actually, actually a female character and, in it. And if you think about way back, if you look at the original Cutlass video, that was a female flying yeah. the Cutlass. Well, and that was, that was good. Don't forget, now, a female body is anatomically different to the male body. So the problems they're having with the male body of, like, just going to pick up a cup yeah, that that's going to be very different because of the female anatomy. Things w could clip, and that's the oh, fucking Jesus and, Christ solving <laughs> clipping issues with a fucking and, and CIG <laughs> are Good doing CIG and and C I and uh, I mean, Mr. Sherman in chat does have a point that CIG are trying to do an MMO with so much more, and I hate to say the word, everyone drink fidelity. Um, than than basically any other uh and they they kind of have to but it's really i'm glad that they're doing this this way and i'm glad that they are taking the time to make sure that female and male characters both look as good as they do and yes they've focused mainly on the male character and the female character hasn't come out yet and that's i hate that but at the same time and if i think of something like uh battlefield's excuse for not having female characters and battlefield one's excuse was there weren't females in the war like what about battlefield four I don't what was their excuse I, then? I, I, they, didn't, they didn't want to animate different things, and that was for something simple. CIG are doing something a lot more complicated, and I'm glad that they're not just half-assing it and giving the female skeleton yeah. the same as the male. They are doing a good job on it, and I know that it, it sucks that it's not out yet, but I am I'm really, really excited that when it is out, it's likely going to blow every other game that does both out of the water and certainly blow the game the hell out of most games that don't have female character models to begin with they're gonna do it right and that's what we've been saying about everything when it comes to star citizen is we want them to take the time that it takes to do it right and i think it's taken too long on the female character model but at the same time i want everything now i think it's taken too long on 3.0 and i think it's taken too long on squadron 4 everything takes too long it's development it's all <laughs> yeah, i wanted it all i wanted it all yesterday everything takes too long but then it's only done when it's done and you want it done when it's done you, you don't want like some weird weird errors coming in to it you want it to be usable don't you there, yeah. there's all sorts of weird errors they need to look over like and just all sorts of weird errors that are completely different from the male characters like and this is going to sound so childish when your character looks down as a male that view needs to be adjusted for the female character for starters and it's stupid tiny little things like that 
that they go, oh, for fuck's sake, we could be just doing, working on these 77 bug fixes, or we could be trying to get the character model to not clip through her own chest. How do you feel about the need for female character models in Star Citizen? <laughs> Okay, apparently I can't I can't bring her on. She's running away. I thought that was oh, Shimmer's job. Thumbs up. Okay, uh, we've got time for a few more questions. We've got a few minutes left. Uh, Abdo asks, what aspects taken from EVE Online will be implemented in Star Citizen? Space bastardry. It's in space. No, being a space bastard. Oh, being a, a bastard. Okay. Uh, oh, yes. Christians in Space, the musical, asks a long one. Give me time here to read it. Um, is sure it... I like that book, too. Is it... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> wow. Uh, is it reasonable to think any form, small or large, of player-controlled customization where the outposts are concerned would be in 3.0? On another completely serious note, do you think Gencom would be sensible to add with drug mechanics whenever that gets in-game? It'd be... Oh, God! ...need to see some synergy between farming and drug mecha manufacturing mechanics in the distant future to create more of a physical presence of smackheads and delve excuse me, into Star Citizen's drug lore. Well, on that second point, I mean, we do have the Endeavor, and that is literally billed as a medical ship slash drug maker. Uh, on the Did first... Did actually say Jenkum, though? Yes. I don't actually... Does anyone else here know what Jenkum is? No. It's... And I think this is just urban legend. It's getting high off of sewage. Oh. Okay. I mean, it, it fits in a ship. It, it, you have that. So. Hey, if you gotta do it, you gotta do it. <laughs> I, I'm actually pretty pleased with CIG's inclusion of drugs in the lore so far, and the inclusion of like people will be able to get high on shit. Cause good. Uh, the question is. Don't say high on shit. <laughs> Shiver. <laughs> I'm trying to run a show here. <laughs> Don't interrupt me, or I'll fire you for a month while you're gone, and then rehire you when you get back. <laughs> um, does, does that mean if I'm not fired, I have to do stuff for Relay while I'm away? Yes. I'm gonna keep trying, then. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. I don't fire- actually, no, I fire everyone. They never leave, though. I've fired every single member of Relay. No one's left. And yourself. Yeah, I've fired myself, too, but I don't leave either. Um, Triangularity, I have a question. What should drugs actually do to your character in game? Oh, um, that's a, a really good question. Uh, I would say that it should be. It should be. Uh, depends on what kind of a uh, age restriction you want in the game. Uh, I would say you need uh, at least to see some distortion and if you can use drugs, you need to see distortion and, well, depends on the drug. Now, age uh, we have seen a little bit of that with the liquor bar. Yeah. Now, yeah. Age, age restrictions in games tend to be done so that the games can be put on retail shelves. Is that something we're going to stop seeing at some point soon? Because who the hell goes and buys a boxed copy at fucking Walmart? And, and CIG, are they even, is Star Citizen even going to be on store shelves? Or is it going to be a you download it? Because it's for fucking well, PC. We're not a bunch of fucking console plebs. There are box copies being made. There are? But only to certain backers. But does that, the question is, does that skirt the law because it's going straight to people who order it? Or, or is it considered as a retail purchase for the sake of certification? I think that's part of the problem of uh, you can't have, you can't kill kids in games 
not because it matters in like North America, but because Germany is for some strange reason against the the murder of infants. Yeah, but Germany huh. and, and Australia get their own sensed version of things for that. That's true. In left uh, in the case of Left for Dead Two. They censored the cover in this country because it showed, you know, a zombie hand basically doing that. And that was considered a bit on edge because he might be flipping people off like that, which is offensive in this country. Triangularity. What yeah. kind of headphones are you using and are they comfortable for use with your glasses, which I believe came from Harold Zagnot Sparhawk? Yeah, uh, I do use uh, Bang & uh, Bang Orders. Uh, it's a Danish company. Bless you. <laughs> They're really good, uh, and they are not pressing on my glasses. That's part of why I don't wear headphones. Because a lot of times when I'm not on camera, I'll be wearing my glasses, and I hate the way the headphones press into them. Hmm. I, need to, I need to type it, I think. Bryvols has asked philosophical question. Oh shit. Why would it matter if the avatar you are playing is male or female at this stage of the game? Immersion. Um are you a minority? <laughs> Basically. I am. Um it's less about the character you're playing and more about being able to relate to the game and feel like you're being heard. Triangularity, do you ever play female avatars in games, or do you stick with male? I do both. Um, it really David depends. I like that once. <laughs> so did I. Uh, no, I just wanted uh, to say the line. <laughs> I will do another one for you, Shiva. Uh, I'm open to both of them. Okay, that, that seems like a good idea. <laughs> Do you, nah, why I, is that? Do you do you feel you can relate to your character regardless of the gender? Yeah. Uh, the thing is, I do not role play so much when I play a character. Uh, so it's not so important uh, for me uh, what kind of uh, fear, well, uh, sex my character have. Um, so... It's both ways, I would say. Uh, I, uh, some games I use a female character, some, uh, some games I use a male one. Um. Eris, yeah. you you're usually go with a female avatar, don't you, in a game? I do. Why? Do you, do, do you, does it not affect your um, ability to relate to the character you're playing? I tend to care? relate better to women anyway, and I find them more attractive to look at in the game. And if I'm going to spend 90% of the game looking at someone's ass, because in 90% of the games, that's all you're doing. I don't want to play a game with you if you're just sat there staring at your character's ass 90% no, of the I time. No, I don't, but, and it, it's not, like, that's one, but it's not just that. It's also... Like it's if I look at if I, screen, you know that, if right? I look if it's I look at fighting bottom. games, if I look at fighting games, the male characters tend to be really powerful and slightly slow. And I like something that's faster and more agile, which tends to be the female characters. Um, if you look at the the stories that I write, the fiction that I've written, I tend to write from the female perspective. I I relate more to a female character than a male. I think men are disgusting and suck. Quite frankly. And yes, I include you in that, Shiver. <laughs> sexist pig. 100%. 100% sexist. I am the sexistest. Sexistest. Help me. Sexiest. 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 <laughs> you got it in stereo, so it must be true. <laughs> no, I, I tend to play female characters because that tends to be the characters that I create. I mean, Garbage Woman is female. Fan and Adele are female. Go look at any of my fiction. It tends to be female. I write I write better as, as a girl. Uh, Miss Hearts, have you ever played a game where you're like, you know, I'm going to try... Oh, God, no phrasing for Miss Hearts. <laughs> where you're like, I've decided I'm going to play this game playing the character of a male. And did it affect your gameplay um, enjoyment 
I have done that, but I tend not to do that because it's rare for me to have the option to play a female character. So when I have the option, I feel like I want to take it. There's been, I mean, I've, I've considered rolling male characters before, but I feel like I'm missing something when I do. I feel like I'm looking over that opportunity I've been presented and that I play male characters when I have to play male characters because that's my only other choice. And so I play enough of those that when I can play female, I want to play female. So I, I actually think we could continue talking about this for quite a while. Uh, and maybe this is this is something we should have a, a special podcast at some point about. Um, well, I, there's like one to, problem. What? You could never have all female crew on a cutlass because there's no bathroom. And, you know, pairs, bathroom, no <laughs> hey, bathroom. Hey, dude, just go in your space suit. That's what they're for. Uh, I unfortunately have to run because I have to go look at a house. Um, cause I want a house. Um, but I want to, before we go, say thank you to Ms. Hearts. Where can you be found? Where can the people in chat find you? I am M-Z-H-A-R-T-Z everywhere. Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I, if there's a social network, I'm probably on it. Well done on the branding. Uh, Mr. Triangularity, thank you for coming on. Where can where can the uh, lovely men and ladies in chat find you? You will find me at uh, mostly at uh, the Discord uh, the base uh, or at the relay. So you can find me uh, at the Discord. Yeah, I also have a Twitter account, uh, Triangularity. Okay, so you can hook me up there. Um, at most lights. And Mr. Shiver? Uh, just usually I do the dead air on Wednesdays at the base. I don't think we've got a Friday night show yet. And and sometimes I'm on here. Uh, and I am Eris. You can find me on Relay. Sometimes I show up on the base to pester Shiver or Schiller as he's now known. Uh, if no one noticed the change to his name, um, I was kind of proud of that one. <laughs> and I can't be proud of it because it was Mr. Sherman suggested it. But um, I just need something to shill. And I was like, I haven't, this is one of the times I haven't actually got a can of Coke. And bloody hell, I would be happy if Coca Cola sponsored me. I drink enough of oh, that man. shit. I'd be happy if anyone sponsored us, quite frankly. Hey, CIG, do you need sponsors? Hey, uh, Beer. I was sponsored any by beer. a liquor company for a while. Literally any beer. Hey, I will sponsor the hell out of you. Any beer. Send me beer, I'll sponsor you. I drink enough of it on stream. You know, I, I was I'm actually sure I... sponsored by Cardinal Spirits. You for are... Ugh. Oh, and then amazing. I moved did on. I, did I tell you about the Irish playwright who was asked to bring in to think of a tagline for uh, Guinness? He was an alcoholic, and after two weeks of struggling and being sent two crates of Guinness for free... They came to his flat, all this scrumpled up pieces of paper everywhere, and he handed them this thing, and he said, looked at it, and it says, Guinness, it makes you drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Guinness, it's good for you. Join us on Friday at whatever the hell time, um, 1900 UTC. So we're probably going to go live at 1800 or 1730 Friday with a pre-show for Gamescom, then we're going to re-host Gamescom, then we're going to post-stream Gamescom. Join us for that. Join us next Saturday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time for this again. Uh, check out Relay.sc. Check out all of our guests. Check out uh, your body because cancer sucks and you need to get checked. And we'll see you all in the verse. Have a good night.